Welcome to the Kim Nickel Trail, a trail unlike any place else in the Coachella Valley, and with a chance of seeing some plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth. The Kim Nickel Trail is part of the Edom Hill Conservation Area in the Coachella Valley Multiple Species Habitat Conservation Plan, and honors Kim Nickel, who spent her life working to protect the endangered species and open spaces of the Coachella Valley. Kim helped establish the Coachella Valley Multiple Species Habitat Conservation Plan and protect many of the plants and animals in the Coachella Valley that we love so much. My name is Colin Barrows, and I'm here with my fellow California naturalists, Tracy and Elizabeth again. And if you saw one of our last videos on Let's Hike, uh, the Indio Hills Badlands Trail, we're in the same geological formation here on the Kim Nickel Trail in the Indio Hills. That was on the very far end of the Indio Hills, and we're here on the very west end of the Indio Hills. And you can see the same kind of conglomerate, not quite rock, formation of rocks and sand jumbled together from floods that have come down from the surrounding mountains and deposited over the relatively recent geological history. Whew. So the Kim Nickel Trail can be a challenging trail. There's no uh, sugar coating it. And in fact, I'm a little out of breath just coming up this little hill here. You uh, start off the trail from the parking area through a, a pretty gradual little wash. And then you come to this hill, which is probably the hardest thing in the trail to do. It's a very steep hill that comes up. Luckily, it's real short. You have this nice rock to rest on about two thirds of the way up. And while you're here resting, you get a nice view of the lay of the land, uh, the Indio Hills themselves, and you can see a beautiful view of Mount San Gorgonio in the distance there. One of the really wonderful things about this trail is the way it showcases those connections between the mountains and the sand. And again, hopefully the lizards and the flowers, the birds and the bees. If you can power through those steps in the soft sand, the Kim Nickel Trail will reward you. That soft sand that you're trudging through on the trail is part of what makes this trail unique. We're actually hiking through a sand dune environment here. So the sand has um, blown in and deposited on top of the Indio Hills from the west. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But with the sand, you'll find unique plants and animals that have adapted to the sand dune environment and are found nowhere else. An example of that are these holes that you'll see and these belong to the desert kangaroo rats, which really love the sand dune environments. And you can see this one has been actively used. They're out at night, so he's in there sleeping somewhere. And you can see the fresh uh, tail dragging tracks all around the mouth of the hole here. And there's actually about a half dozen holes kind of in the same complex. So he's got some escape holes to get away from predators from. If a sidewinder or something like that were to go down there, he can escape out one of the holes in the backside. So keep your eyes out for the tracks of these kinds of animals. Unless you're out here in the middle of the night, you're probably not gonna see them, but you'll see the tracks that they're leaving behind. And those tracks stay really well imprinted in the soft sand dune sand. If you're hiking the trail clockwise, like we are today, you're gonna be spending most of the first part of the trail going uphill up a fairly steep slope. And luckily there's plenty of opportunities for you to stop and enjoy the view, take a break. There's some rocks you can sit on and you can see a really amazing exposed geology of the Indio Hills. These exposed, twisted, and tortured landscape that's indicative of the San Andreas Fault. Just like you can see in the Indio Hills Badlands or in the Coachella Valley Preserve around the Moon Country area, you'll see that same tortured and warped landscape where the San Andreas Fault is running all throughout as it continues out through the west and through the pass in the San Gorgonio Mountains. There's one really special animal living in this sand dune environment along the Kim Nickel Trail that you'll want to be particularly on the lookout for. And that's a tiny lizard, only a few inches long, called a Coachella Valley Fringe Toad Lizard. And we've just spotted one here underneath this creosote bush. And Coachella Valley Fringe Toad Lizards are special lizards, not just because they're kind of cool and unique to see. This is the only trail you can hike on in the Coachella Valley and see these lizards. And the Coachella Valley is the only place in the world where you can see this particular species of fringe toad lizard. But they also carry some extra meaning, I think, because of their connection to the story of conservation in the Coachella Valley and the history of the protection of plants and animals here. So we've reached the high point of the Kim Nickel Trail. And luckily we've got the hard part behind us. It's uh, mostly downhill with a little bit of hilliness in between here and home now. 
And we've really got a, a wonderful payoff here with a panoramic view of the Coachella Valley around us. So we can just kind of pick out the landmarks we can see. You can actually see the Salton Sea, just a sliver there away in the distance. To the east, uh, you can see Martinez Mountain, which would be sort of the main, most prominent peak that you'd see if you're in the La Quinta or Indio area. There's Toro Peak and San Rosa, the two highest peaks in the San Rosa Mountains. And then we have the ridge of the San Jacinto Mountains and the peak, Mount San Jacinto there with snow on top. And then across the pass, Mount San Gagonio. From this vantage point, you can see how everything is connected. And believe it or not, these mountain ranges are also connected to those tiny French show lizards that we saw earlier. So look at Mount San Gagonio. You can see uh, below the snow-capped peaks, these huge exposed granitic faces. They're just these light kind of colored rocks. And if you just imagine millions of years of erosion as Mount San Gagonio was uplifted and the mountains fractured and faults formed, boulders caved off of the sides of cliff faces there and started to slowly roll down the hills. And floods came along and started to pick up those boulders, break them apart into smaller and smaller boulders as they move further down and down the mountains. They'll pass through the Whitewater River, the Whitewater Preserve, and to be deposited out in these floodplains right in the middle of the pass there. And right in the middle of the pass, you can see all the windmills here. That's where all the wind goes. So the wind comes through the pass and picks up all of the smallest sand grain particles that have been deposited from that floodplain. And those small grains get carried this way, get carried east towards Bandio Hills, towards the Coachella Valley Preserve. And as the wind decreases in power, the further and further east you go, that sand starts to drop down to the ground and form these sand dunes. So the rocks of San Gregonio are the same material that's forming the sand underneath our feet here on the Kimnickel Trail. The same material that those fringe show lizards depend upon to survive. The trail is almost entirely open, exposed desert, and it makes it really perfect habitat for lizards. Valley fringe toad lizard, like this one right here, are really perfectly adapted to the sand dune environment here. In fact, so well adapted that they can't really leave this environment, and that's why they're unique to this part of the Coachella Valley. And so what are those adaptations? Well, they have, as you can guess by their name, they have fringed toes that work like little scoops as they're moving through the sand. When you're trudging uphill in the sand, you're taking two steps forward and one steps back, but their little scoops give them traction, allow them to run on sand the same as you could run on a track. They also have a shovel-shaped nose. It allows them to actually dive into the sand to escape predators and stay underground during the hottest part of the day. They have special nose and ear coverings that allow them to breathe under the sand, and their coloration matches the sand almost perfectly so that predators flying overhead won't be able to see them. So we made it back to the end of the trail. We closed the loop and came back down that big steep slope. And we're just a few feet away from the cars back here in the shadow of Mount San Jacinto here. I hope you enjoyed our uh, trip together along to the Kimnickel Trail and you get the opportunity to come out and enjoy it for yourself. See the amazing lizards and really unique lizards that you can't see anywhere else on earth right here on this trail. 
couple of things to keep in mind when you come. Unfortunately, there is a fair amount of uh, illegal off-road vehicle activity along the trail, and there's a lot of trails kind of crisscrossing across the real trail. Uh, so as you're going down the trail, make sure you're following the sightline carcinite markers at most trail posts that stick up. You should be able to see them pretty much the whole of the trail through. So if you feel like you're following some tire tracks and they take you down the wrong path, just backtrack a little bit and find your uh, footing again. Also, there really isn't much shade on this trail. As we talked about, it's pretty much open, exposed desert the whole way. It can get pretty warm in the afternoon, so you may want to start early. February and March are good times to go along the trail. April is probably a little late to have to deal with the heat and bring more water than you think you'll need. Other than that, have fun, and we'll see you on the next trail.